Here We Are by Dorothy Parker The young man in the new blue suit finished arranging the glistening luggage in tight corners of the Pullman compartment. The train had leapt at curves and bounced along straightways, rendering balance a praiseworthy achievement and a sporadic one, and the young man had pushed and hoisted and tucked and shifted the bags with concentrated care. Nevertheless, eight minutes for the settling of two suitcases and a hat-box is a long time. He sat down, leaning back against bristled green plush, in the seat opposite the girl in beige. She looked as new as a peeled egg. Her hat, her fur, her frock, her gloves were glossy and stiff with novelty. On the arc of the thin, slippery sole of one beige shoe was gummed a tiny oblong of white paper, printed with the price set and paid for that slipper and its fellow, and the name of the shop that had dispensed them. She had been staring raptly out of the window, drinking in the big, weathered signboards that extol the phenomena of codfish without bones and screens no rust could corrupt. As the young man sat down, she turned politely from the pain, met his eyes, started a smile, got it about half done, and rested her gaze just above his right shoulder. Well, the young man said. Well, she said. Well, here we are, he said. Here we are, she said. Aren't we? I should say we were, he said. Yep, here we are. Well, she said. Well, he said. Well, she said. Well, he said, how does it feel to be an old married lady? Oh, oh, it's too soon to ask me that, she said. At least, I mean, I mean, goodness, we've only been married about three hours, haven't we? The young man studied his wristwatch, as if he were just acquiring the knack of reading time. We have been married, he said, exactly two hours and twenty-six minutes. My, she said, it seems like longer. No, he said. It isn't hardly half past six yet. It seems like later, she said. I I guess it's because it starts getting dark so early. It does at that, he said. The nights are going to be pretty long from now on. I mean, I I I mean, well, it starts getting dark early. I didn't have any idea what time it was, she said. Everything was so mixed up. I sort of don't know where I am or what it's all about. Getting back from the church and then all those people and then changing all my clothes and then everybody throwing things and all. Goodness, I don't see how people do it every day. Do what, he said. Get married, she said. When you think of all the people all over the world getting married just as if it was nothing. Chinese people and everybody just as if it wasn't anything. Well, let's not worry about people all over the world, he said. Let's don't think about a lot of Chinese. We got something better to think about. I, I, I mean, I mean, I mean, well, well, what do we care about then? I know, she said, but I just sort of got to thinking of them, all of them, all over everywhere, doing it all the time. Uh, at least I, I mean getting married, you know, and it, it's, well, well, it's sort of such a big thing to do. It makes you feel queer. You think of them, all of them, all doing it just like it wasn't anything. And how does anybody know what's going to happen next? Let them worry, he said. We don't have to. We know what darn well what's going to happen next. I, I, I mean, well, uh, well, 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 we know it's going to be great. Well, we, we know we're going to be happy, don't we? Oh, of course, she said. Only you think of all the people, and then you have to sort of keep thinking. It makes you feel funny. An awful lot of people that get married. It doesn't turn out so well, and I guess they must all have thought it was going to be great. Come on now, he said. This is no way to start a honeymoon with all this thinking going on. Look at us. 
all married and everything done, I, I mean, um, um, almost, uh, the, the wedding done and all. Oh, it was nice, wasn't it, she said. Did you really like my veil? You looked great, he said, just great. Oh, I'm terribly glad, she said. Ellie and Louise looked lovely, didn't they? I'm terribly glad they did finally decide on pink. They looked perfectly lovely. Listen, he said, I want to tell you something. When I was standing up there in that old church, waiting for you to come up, and I saw those two bridesmaids, I thought to myself, I thought, well, I never knew Louise could look like that. Why, she'd have knocked anybody's eye out. Oh, really? she said. Funny. Of course, everybody thought her dress and hat were lovely, but a lot of people seem to think she looked sort of tired. People have been saying that a lot lately. I tell them I think it's awfully mean of them to go around saying that about Louise. I tell them they've got to remember that Louise isn't so terribly young anymore, and they've got to expect her to look like that. Louise can say she's 23 all she wants to, but she's a good deal nearer 27. Well, she certainly was a knockout of the wedding, he said. Boy, I'm terribly glad you thought so, she said. I'm glad someone did. How did you think Ellie looked? Why, I honestly didn't get a look at Ellie, he said. Oh, really, she said. Well, I certainly think that's too bad. I don't suppose I ought to say it about my own sister, but I never saw anybody look as beautiful as Ellie looked today, and always so sweet and unselfish too. And then you didn't even notice her. But you never pay any attention to Ellie anyway. Don't think I haven't noticed it. It makes me feel just terrible. It makes me feel just awful that you don't like my own sister. I do like her, he said. I'm crazy for Ellie. I think she's a great kid. Well, don't think it makes any difference to Ellie, she said. Ellie's got enough people crazy about her. It isn't anything to her whether you like her or not. Don't flatter yourself. She cares. Only. The only thing is. It makes it awfully hard for me. You don't like her. That's the only thing. I keep thinking, when we come back and get in that apartment and everything, it's going to be awfully hard for me that you won't want my own sister to come and see me. It's going to make it awfully hard for me that you, you won't ever, ever want my family around. I know how you feel about my family. Don't think I haven't seen it. Only if you don't want to see them, that's your loss, not theirs. Don't flatter yourself. Oh, come on now, he said. What is all this talk about not wanting your family around? Why, you know how I feel about your family. I think your old lady, I, I mean, your, your mother, I think she's swell, and Ellie, and your father. What is all this talk? Well, I've seen it, she said. Don't think I haven't. Lots of people, they get married, and they think it's going to be great and everything, and then it all goes to pieces, because people don't like people's families, or something like that. Don't tell me I've seen it happen. Honey, he said, what is all this? What are you getting all angry about? Hey, look, this is our honeymoon. What are you trying to start a fight for? Ah, oh, I guess you're just feeling kind of nervous. Me, she said, me? What have I got to be nervous about? I, 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 mean, I, I, I mean, goodness, I'm not nervous, not nervous at all. You know, lots of times, he said, they say that girls get kind of nervous and Yippee, on account of thinking about, I, I mean, well, well, it's like you said, things are all sort of mixed up and everything right now. But afterwards, it'll be all right. I, I mean, I mean, well, look, honey, you don't look any too comfortable. Don't you want to take your hat off? And let's not ever fight, will we? Oh, I'm sorry I was cross, she said. I guess I did feel a little bit funny, all mixed up, and then thinking of all those people all over everywhere, and then being sort of way off here, all alone with you. It's so sort of different. It's sort of such a big thing. You can't blame a person for thinking, can you? Yes, don't let's ever fight. We won't be like a whole lot of them. We won't fight or be nasty or anything, will we? You bet your life we won't, he said. I guess I will take this darned old hat off, she said. It kind of presses. Just put it up on the rack, will you, dear? Do you like it, sweetheart? Looks good on you, he said. No, but I mean, she said. Do you really like it? Well, I'll tell you, he said, I know this is the new style and everything like that, and it's probably great. I don't know anything about things like that, only I like that kind of hat, like that blue hat you had. Gee, I like that hat. Oh, really, she said. 
Well, that's nice. That's lovely. The first thing you say to me as soon as you get me off on a train away from my family and everything is that you don't like my hat. The first thing you say to your wife is you think she has terrible taste in hats. Well, that's nice, isn't it? Nice. Now, honey, he said, I never said anything like that. I only said... What you don't seem to realize, she said, is that this hat cost twenty-two dollars, twenty-two dollars, and that horrible old blue thing you think you're so crazy about, that cost three ninety-five. I don't give a darn what they cost, he said. I only said I like that blue hat. I don't know anything about hats. I'll be crazy about this one as soon as I get used to it, only it's kind of not like your other hats. I don't know about the new stars. What do I know about women's hats? It's too bad, she said, you didn't marry somebody that would get you the kind of hats you'd like. Hats that cost three ninety five. Why didn't you marry Louise? You always think she looks so beautiful. You love her taste in hats. Why didn't you marry her? Oh, now, honey, for heaven's sake, why didn't you marry her, she said. All you've done ever since we got on this train is to talk about her. Here I've sat and sat and just listened to you saying how wonderful Louise is. I suppose that's nice, getting me off all here, alone with you, and then raving about Louise right in front of my face. Why didn't you ask her to marry you? I'm sure she would have jumped at the chance. There aren't so many people asking her to marry them. It's too bad you didn't marry her. I'm sure you'd have been much happier. Listen, baby, he said, while you're talking about things like that, why didn't you marry Joe Brooks? I suppose he could have given you all the twenty-two dollar hats you wanted, I suppose. Well, I'm not so sure. I'm not sorry I didn't, she said. There. Joe Brooks wouldn't have waited till he got me off all alone and then sneered at my taste in clothes. Joe Brooks would never have hurt my feelings. Joe Brooks has always been fond of me. There. Yeah, he said. He's so fond of you. He was so fond of you that he didn't even send a wedding present. That's how fond of you he was. I happen to know for a fact, she said, that he was away on business and as soon as he comes back, he's going to give me anything I want for the apartment. Listen, he said, I don't want anything he gives you in our apartment. Anything he gives you, I'll throw right out of the window. That's what I think of your friend, Joe Brooks. And how do you know where he is? And what he's going to do anyway? Has he been writing to you? I suppose my friends can correspond with me, she said. I didn't hear there was any law against that. Well, I suppose they can't, he said. And what do you think of that? I'm not going to have my wife getting a lot of letters from cheap traveling salesman. Joe Brooks is not a cheap traveling salesman, she said. He is not. He gets a wonderful salary. Oh, yeah, he said. Where do you hear that? He told me so himself, she said. Oh, he told you so himself, he said. I see. He told you so himself. You've got a lot of right to talk about Joe Brooks, she said. You and your friend Louise. All you ever talk about is Louise. Oh, for heaven's sakes, he said. What do I care about, Louise? I just thought she was a friend of yours. That's all. That's why I ever even noticed her. Well, you certainly took an awful lot of notice of her today, she said. On our wedding day. You said to yourself, when you were standing there in church, you just kept thinking of her, right there, up at the altar, right in the presence of God, and all you thought about was Louise. Listen, honey, he said. I never should have said that. How does anybody know what kind of crazy things come into their heads when they're standing there waiting to get married? I was just telling you that because I thought it was so kind of crazy. I, I thought it would make you laugh. I know, she said. I've been all sort of mixed up today, too. I told you that. Everything's so strange and everything, and me thinking all the time, thinking about all those people all over the world, all the Chinese, and now us here all alone and everything, and I know you get all mixed up. Only I did think, when you kept talking about how beautiful Louise looked, you did it with malice and forethought. I never did anything with malice and forethought, he said. I just told you that about Louise, because I thought it would make you laugh. Well, it didn't she said. No, I know it didn't, he said. It certainly did not. Oh, baby, we ought to be laughing too. Hell, honey lamb, this is our honeymoon. What's the matter? I don't know, she said. We used to squabble a lot when we were going together and then engage and everything, but I, I thought everything would be different as soon as you were married. And now I feel so sort of strange and everything. I feel so sort of alone. 
Well, you see, sweetheart, he said, we're not really married yet. I mean, I, I mean, I mean, well, things will be different afterwards. Oh, oh hell, I, I mean, we haven't been married very long. No, she said. Well, we haven't got much longer to wait now, he said. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, we'll be in New York in, in about 20 minutes. Then we can have dinner and see what we sort of feel like doing, or, I mean, is there anything special you want to do tonight? What, she said. What I mean to say is, he said, would you like to go to a show or something? Why? Whatever you like, she said. I sort of didn't think people went to theatres and things on there. Uh, I mean, I mean, I've got a couple of letters. I simply must write. Don't let me forget. Oh, he said, you're going to write letters tonight. Well, you see, she said, I've been perfectly terrible, what with all the excitement and everything. I never did thank poor old Mrs. Sprague for her berry spoon, and I never did a thing about those bookends the McMaster sent. It's just too awful of me. I've got to write them this very night. And when you finish writing your letters, he said, maybe I could get you a magazine or a bag of peanuts. What? she said. I mean, I wouldn't want you to be bored, he said. As if I could be bored with you, she said. Silly. Aren't we married? Bored? What I thought, he said. I thought when we got in, we could go right up to the Biltmore and anyway leave our bags and maybe have a little dinner in the room, kind of quiet, and then do whatever we wanted. I, I, I mean, well, well, let's go there from the station. Yes, she said. Yes, let's. I'm so glad we're going to the Biltmore. I just love it when we... In New York, we've always stayed there. Mama and Papa and Ellie and me. And I was crazy about it. I always sleep so well there. I go right off to sleep the minute I put my head on the pillow. Oh, you do, he said. Oh, at least I mean, she said. Way up high. It's so quiet. We might go to some show or other tomorrow night instead of tonight, he said. Don't you think that would be better? Yes, I think it might, she said. He rose, balanced a moment, crossed over, and sat down beside her. Do you really have to write those letters tonight, he said. Well, she said, I don't suppose they'd get there any quicker than if I wrote them tomorrow. There was a silence, with things going on in it. And we won't ever fight any more, will we, he said. Oh, no, she said. Not ever. I don't know what made me do like that. It it all got so sort of funny, so sort of like a nightmare, the way I got to thinking of all those people getting married all the time, those Chinese and so many of them, and everything spoils on account of fighting and everything. I got all mixed up thinking about them. I don't want to be like them. But we won't be, will we? Sure we won't, he said. We won't go all to pieces, she said. We won't fight. It'll be different now we're married. It'll all be lovely. Reach me down my hat, will you, sweetheart? It's time I was putting it on. Thanks. I'm sorry you don't like it. I do so like it, he said. You said you didn't, she said. You said you thought it was perfectly terrible. I never said any such thing, he said. You're crazy. All right, I may be crazy, she said. Thank you very much. But that's what you said. Not that it matters. It's just a little thing. But it makes you feel pretty funny to think you've gone and married somebody that says you have perfectly terrible taste in hats and then goes on to say you're crazy. Besides, now listen here, he said. Nobody said any such thing. Why, I love that hat. The more I look at it, the better I like it. I think it's great. Well, that isn't what you said before, she said. Honey, he said, stop it, will you? What do you want to start all this for? I love the damned hat. I mean, I, I love your hat. I love anything you wear. What more do you want me to say? Well, I don't want you to say it like that, she said. I said I think it's great, he said. That's all I said. Oh, do you really, she said. Do you honestly? Oh, I'm so glad. I'd hate you not to like my hat. It would be, I don't know, it would be such a sort of a bad start. Well, I'm crazy for it, he said. Now, we got that settled. For heaven's sake. Oh, baby, baby, we're not going to have any bad starts. Look at us. We're on our honeymoon. Pretty soon we'll be a regular old married couple. I, 
I mean, I mean, in a few minutes, uh, very soon, in a few minutes, we'll be getting into New York, and then we'll be going to the Aptel, and then everything will be all right. I mean, I mean, well, look at us. Here we are, married. Here we are. Yes, here we are, she said. Aren't we?